I want to talk about the three bellies, okay? If you look around and observe people, you're going to find out a lot of people have belly fat. But today we're going to differentiate three different types of belly fat. There are three different problems. And I wrote a book about this and I talk about the four different bellies. But today we're going to combine two of those in one and kind of talk about the actual underlying causes because that belly type is the same shape, but it's coming from two different causes. And so we have the sagging belly fat. Okay. That is either a problem with too much insulin or too much cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. The next belly is the protruded belly. You usually see this with the guy that's wearing the Speedo on the beach. He's thin, but he has this basketball pregnant stomach, okay? That is not fat. It is a liver problem. The liver is very, very damaged. And this person is leaking fluid from the liver into a sac in the abdomen. So it's a fluid filled sac. If you take one part of the belly and you tap on the other part, you'll feel there'll be a little bit of a ripple effect. Okay. So that's number two. Now, the third belly is more of a lower pooch. You see this a lot in women, but it's also in men. It's more of a superficial fat. It's called subcutaneous fat. And it's not necessarily the fat that's around the organs. It's just superficial. And a lot of times it comes from too much estrogen. Okay. So let's first talk about the sagging belly. This is called visceral fat. Visceral fat is spill off from the liver. The liver is filling up with fluid and it has nowhere to go. So then it spills off around the organs, around the intestines, around the heart, around the pancreas. A lot of times the fat goes inside the organs as well, but this is more of a dangerous fat because it is obstructing the function of certain organs, especially the pancreas. And it is also releasing certain things that are increasing your inflammation, which then causes problems in the heart. It causes problems with insulin resistance. It creates problems in other organs. So this type of belly is usually coming from too much insulin, which is then triggered from too many carbohydrates. That's right. I know you're shocked, but too many carbs will increase insulin and put the fat right in your gut. Now, just because someone doesn't have belly fat doesn't mean they don't have visceral fat. There's a term called TOFI. That stands for thin on the outside, fat on the inside. So just because someone doesn't have a gut doesn't mean they don't have visceral fat. I just wanted to point that out. Now, I wanna mention cortisol for a second. Cortisol is a stress hormone. What cortisol does is it indirectly increases insulin. So when you have a sagging belly, that effect is created by insulin, which is either coming from carbohydrates or stress from cortisol. So the cortisol makes your belly increase by triggering insulin because cortisol increases the production of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. So in other words, it'll take your protein, it'll take your fat and turn it into glucose, which then triggers insulin. So when you go through stress, it will increase your blood glucose from other things, not carbs. So stress and sugar create the same effect, belly fat and many other problems. And the term for that is called gluconeogenesis. Okay. The creation of new sugar. Now, as far as getting rid of this type of belly, do you think exercise would be a significant thing to focus on? The answer is no. <laughs> Diet. You're not going to see much results with exercise. Why? Because exercise does not decrease insulin in a significant way. The majority of the results are going to be from keeping your carbs low from your diet. Now, exercise will help reduce stress, but it's not going to be a significant factor. Now, if your problem is stress, there's a lot of things you can do. I created some videos down below if you're new to my channel because so many people are going through stress and I have some really great tips on that. But I will say as a side note, probably the biggest source of stress comes from other people. So there are certain personality types that can keep a person under constant stress. And unless they deal with that, man, there's going to be just a difficult time getting rid of belly fat. 
And the other point is sleep. If you can fix your sleep, you can greatly fix your stress. All right, let's shift to the protruding belly. This is a liver problem, usually cirrhosis, advanced liver disease. And the problem is this has been going for a long time. When you start generating fluid in your abdomen, your liver is pretty messed up. And the chances of you reversing it are pretty slim. Unless you catch it at some earlier stage and completely change your lifestyle, things in the future, the prognosis is not very good for this body type. I mean, think about it. You have the liver that is so dysfunctional that is leaking fluid into a sac around your abdomen, and you have to go to the hospital every 14 days to get it drained out. Not a good situation. Now, if I was in that situation and someone were to give me some advice, I would radically 100% get on board and start changing my lifestyle. So it really depends on the person and how disciplined they are. Unfortunately, a lot of these cases with ascites is tied with alcoholics and they have a very difficult time giving up alcohol. But number one, you're gonna have to figure out what's triggering this and um, stop that bad habit. Vitamin E in the form of tocotrienols, okay, is very, very beneficial for cirrhosis, which is fibrosis, which is like scar tissue in your liver. And so if you start taking about 300 milligrams of tocotrienols twice or three times a day, that would be a very smart thing. That can actually reduce the formation of fibrosis and, and maybe even reverse some of that. The other types of foods that you need to focus on are foods for the liver. That would be cruciferous vegetables. Moderate to low amount of protein, not extremely low, but you don't want to go high protein because the liver is damaged and the person has lost a lot of liver function to metabolize that protein. So when you overload a damaged liver with too much protein, you don't help the situation. All right. The next thing you want to focus on is your microbiome. Your microbes and your gut actually make a secondary type of bile salt that can actually take the pressure off your liver and help the liver greatly. There's another remedy that I would recommend if I personally had cirrhosis or late stage liver disease. It's called Tutka. It's a type of bile salt that's really, really good for the liver. I just would recommend it if I was trying to deal with this advanced liver problem. Now, would exercise help? Very, very insignificant uh, effect from exercise. So you're going to have to focus mainly on your eating and avoiding certain things. All right, so now let's talk about the superficial fat, the subcutaneous fat, which by the way, is not very dangerous. A lot of people have it and exercise would be very, very beneficial in addition to cutting your carbs and doing intermittent fasting. I will say though, it does take a long time to get rid of that last bit of belly fat. But if you increase the amount of fasting that you do and you follow these next recommendations, I think you can speed it up. But many times the person is estrogen dominant, okay? So we don't want to increase too much estrogen because estrogen increases the superficial fat around the body, especially in the hips, the thighs, and the buttocks. So we wanna lower estrogen. How do we do that? We avoid soy products. We avoid things with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and we consume more organic foods. We avoid dairy, which by the way, can greatly increase your estrogen. We want to avoid plastics. Yeah, that's right. Plastics are in your food. The average person in the US consumes the amount of plastic that equals the size of a credit card. So I've done a video on that. Check it out down below if you haven't seen it. And most of the estrogen in our body actually comes from testosterone. So there's a certain enzyme called aromatase that converts testosterone to estrogen. And when you have too much of that enzyme, you make too much estrogen. And so you can do a natural aromatase inhibitor to lessen the production of estrogen and take a while to guess what foods would be good for that cruciferous vegetables. And then there's a concentrated cruciferous product called DIM. That would be a very good thing to take as well. And lastly, omega-3 helps to inhibit that enzyme, lessening the amount of excess estrogen. So there you have it, the three bellies. So now what you need is the exact plan of what to eat. I created that in this very easy to follow step-by-step -step playlist. Check it out right here.